Hey guys, today I'm going to do a video showing you how to remove and replace quill assemblies or spindle assemblies. A lot of people call them different names on uh, your older MTD riding lawnmowers. You look, this is the deck I'm fixing up here and it's got a bad belt guard here. I'm going to have to weld that. The first thing you want to do is take these two bolts out. There'll be a nut on the bottom side to get that guard out of the way. And you can go ahead and take this nut loose that's on top here. I already got it loose. You'll see there'll be a lock washer under it, and that's the reason I had to, I didn't show it on camera because this nut, this ain't the nut off of this. I had to grind the old one off. You can see it kind of got into the shaft. I knew I was going to be replacing them anyway, so it didn't didn't really matter. And you take off your your blade break disc. It's got a little tab right there. It goes down in the hole right there. Then you just lift off the pulley. Usually they're stuck pretty bad on there, and this one is. Okay, what I did, I pulled up on it and hit the shaft with a hammer lightly. And always use a brass hammer so you won't mess up the top of the shaft and the threads. And I'll just pull right off here. And you can see there's a spline inside there. And that's what holds it on there. Grips. Some of them may have a keyway on there. And you have four bolts to take out. Uh, there's one here. One here, one there, and one there. Don't take these out because these are what hold your whole quill assembly together. You look on the underside there, you can see where the bolts are. I done took two of them out. I figured I'd make a video showing you all how to do this. Be a good video to make. But the first thing you want to do is take your blade off and blade adapter if you can, but you don't have to take the adapter off because it'll come up through the hole in the deck. Now there's supposed to be two bolts with a nut on the back side of the blade adapter, but I already took them out. And but you don't know you don't have to take them out if your blade adapter ain't seized to the shaft. You can just take this middle bolt right here, and the blade and the adapter will come off with it. Now in this case, I had to leave the blade adapter on because it's seized to the shaft, and I cannot get it off. Now what I'm going to do off camera, I'm going to go ahead and take these two bolts out, and we'll take the quill assembly off. Then once you remove your four bolts. Your whole quill assembly will come right off. Like I said, sometimes that blade adapter will get stuck on there, but it'll, it will fit out of there like you see there. Now with quill assemblies, there's an easy way to check them. Uh, a lot of times what will happen on your mower, if you got a bad bearing or bad quill assembly, your belt might pop off a lot because the whole spindle is moving so your pulley can move and pop your belt off. Or you'll notice a loud roaring sound that uh, indicates a bad bearing. But the best way to check one is to check the actual play that's in it. I'm going to put this in a vise here so you can actually see how much play is in these two quill assemblies. But first, I'm going to show you another quill assembly just like these that came off of mower. You ever see this happen to one? Right there's what it's supposed to be like. And this is the pulley off of it. And what happened, see even the splines are gone off of it completely waddled out the pulley right there. Uh, what happened, the nut came loose on the top and it just started getting loose on the shaft there and just, just uh, and that's basically what happened. It just came up off like that and just ground it to a point like that. First time I ever seen one do that. But if that happens, you definitely need a new quill assembly. Uh, you can get the shaft by itself, but if you're going to buy that, you might as well just buy a whole new one. Okay, right here's the first one we're going to look at. First of all, you hear it sounds making. It just sounds like a dry bearing. But the shaft has a whole lot of play in it like that. That's how you know if you got a bad bearing or a bad shaft. Now, if you're planning on just replacing the bearings, be sure to tear this apart completely first. I'm not going to do that in this video. Uh, but uh, that way you know if your shaft is still good. Because you might go to all the trouble ordering new bearings, and it turns out your shaft's bad too, then, it, you, then you've been better off just to buy a whole new quill assembly. Most of the time you are. So this has a lot of end play too, like that. So this one here is definitely bad. Now this one here, oddly enough, actually is still good as far as the bearings go. Just the shaft wore out. There ain't no play in it at all. They sound a little dry, because this was probably got real hot when this happened. The last one here we're going to look at. It feels real stiff. 
and it's got quite a bit of play. But if you look, you can actually see it. The bearing's bad on this one. You can see the inside race is moving inside there. So this one you might be able to get by with just replacing the bearings in it. You always want to tear one down first to make sure the shaft's all right. And just for reference and curiosity's sake, here's a brand new quill assembly I just bought. You can see it's solid. When you spin it, you can just barely hear it. Right there is the number on the bearing, 6204RS. So that's the part number for the bearing itself. Okay, now to put your blade adapters on your blade, the bolt will go through here like this. You have a lock washer and your nut. Tighten them up pretty tight. It's half inch drive, by the way. Alright, I just got both adapters put on both blades. Uh, you can see there, I had to put a new bolt on that one. Also, another note to bring up uh, one of the main reasons for quill assemblies going bad in the first place is your blades out of balance it will cause the bearings to wear out so after you get your adapters on there always make sure that your blades are balanced right and even if you're putting brand new blades on brand new adapters always check it because they can still be out just a little bit okay now we're ready to install the new quill assemblies on the deck here and by the way this can be done with the deck on or off the mower I just happen to have this one off working on it now you can put your bolts in either way but the way I'm doing it I'm feeding the bolt up through the bottom and putting a nut on the top like this. And the reason for that is, um, first of all, if your bolt's too long, it can go down and hit the blade. You don't want that. And second of all, with the bolt sticking down like that, your grass will start building up on there. And I'm going to try to avoid that on this. I'm just going to do it like this. I think it'll be all right. And I'm just going to get all four bolts in here and start tightening them down pretty tight here and uh, do the same thing on both of them. I'm just going to show putting one on here on this one side because it's the same thing on both sides. Now you don't have to, but I recommend putting grease on these splines here. Or if you have any anises, use that. Anything to keep this from getting stuck on there. And then you go ahead and put your pulley on there. It goes on like that. Make sure it catches the splines. Now you're ready to put your blade brake disc on. If you look, there's a hole in the pulley right here. There's a tab here that'll go in there like that. And you have a lock washer and a nut. Oh, by the way, this nut is a 5 8 18 jam nut, but it's a smaller nut. If you look, this is a nut that's just like this one here, and this is a standard nut. You can see it's a lot, a lot bigger than that. That's called a hex jam nut. Okay, this nut is a 15 16 drive. Using a half inch ratchet here to put it on. You want to get it as tight as you can. It's best to have the blade on so you can put your, like a blade removal tool to block the blade so you can get it real tight. I'm not sure of the torque spec on this. Uh, I've always just get them pretty tight here and never had no problems with them. Okay, now we're pretty much done here except for putting your belt guard on. Next thing I'm going to do is turn the deck over so we can see the bottom of it and go ahead and put the blade on it. Okay, here it is from the bottom. You can see how it is. You also want to put some grease on this side or anises or anything like that just to keep it from getting stuck on there. It's best to do this anytime you sharpen your blades or anything. And then you just put your blade on there. Get the splines lined up. Just 
like that. And you got a bolt and a lock washer. Do it right down in here. You want to get this pretty tight and also be careful as you see the blade will try to spin. You can get cut real easy on the blade, so I want to be careful with that. So watch your knuckles and fingers when you do this because it'd be very easy to slip and get cut on there. And that's about it. Like I said, be very careful with the blade like that. As you can see, there's no play at all in there, and it's spinning very free. Also, another point to bring up, double check these three bolts that hold the bearing flange on, because uh, on both of these quill assemblies, one of them was loose, and there's no reason for one of them to be loose. So always check all three of them to make sure they're real tight, because that could eventually start working loose and cause your bearings to wear. I just got both quill assemblies in now. I'm going to get ready to put the belt and belt guard on this side. You always want to put your belt belt guard on at the same time so you can get the belt on it. And as you can see, I got the belt guard on there. It's pretty simple to go on. You just got two bolts there to hold it on. You just got to make sure nothing's rubbing there. It's real free on there. This one's kind of in bad shape. It should have been replaced, but I didn't have another one for it right now. Well, guys, if you got any questions or comments, leave a comment below or send me a message, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So. Thanks for watching.